This looks pretty fun. We have the definite integral from negative one to one of the absolute value of x. So let's work through this. Let's actually do it two ways. Let's do it using the piecewise function definition for the absolute value of x, and then we'll do it graphically using some basic geometry and we'll compare our answers. That might be kind of fun to experiment. So first, let me just mention that the absolute value of x is equal to a piecewise function. And it's going to be x if x is greater than or equal to zero. It's going to be minus x if x is less than zero. So we have to think about uh, if x is positive or negative on this interval. So if you think about the interval, here's negative one, here's uh, one, then here is zero. And so I guess x is going to be less than zero over here, and x will be greater than zero over here. So we can use this little picture to break up our integral. So this is going to be the integral from negative one to zero, absolute value of x dx, plus, and then we're gonna go from zero to one, absolute value of x dx. So just breaking it up, and you don't really need the picture, you can just kind of think, okay, if you're looking at the limits here, you're between negative one and zero, so x is negative. So this, this absolute value will be different from this. The result will be different. Here we're going from zero to one. What I mean by that is the formula is different. So in this case, it's going to be the integral from negative one to zero. And x is less than zero here, right? So the absolute value of x is gonna be equal to negative x because x is less than zero. So we just replace that with negative x. And then we have a dx. Kind of fun, just experiment like this. This is zero to one. And then this is x dx. So let's see here. This is just going to be a power rule integral. We have negative x squared over 2, right? You just use the power rule, add 1, divide. I'm going from negative 1 to 0 plus, and this one would be x squared over 2, going from 0 to 1. Right, just using the power rule, there's a 1 here, there's a 1 here, and you just add and divide by 2. And you plug in the top number first, so it'll be negative 0 squared over 2 minus parentheses, oh, this is negative, and then negative one squared over two. A lot of negatives there. And plus one squared over two minus zero squared over two. And you know, you don't have to write all the steps down, but I thought oh, I'll write them all down. This is gonna be zero. Let's think about what's happening here, all kinds of negative signs. So this one here is gonna be a positive one because it's negative one squared. But then there's two negatives here, that's positive. So this is just gonna be plus one half and plus one half. So we get one. <laughs> so, so the answer is one. Okay, so now let's look at let's look at the graph. Here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis, and we're looking at the absolute value of x, which basically looks like this. The graph is a little crooked. I just gotta fix it, make it a little bit better. There we go. So the absolute value of x looks something like this. And then here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. And recall that over here it's equal to x, so I'll call that y1. And over here it's equal to negative x, so I'll call that y2. And so now let's think about the area that we found. So here's one, here's negative one. So we basically found the area of these two triangles, right? Isn't that cool? So, so we should be able to use the, it looks like eyes. <laughs> We should be able to use the formula for the area of a triangle to verify our answer, which is awesome. So the formula for the area of a triangle, A equals one half base times height. So here the base is one. And because we know this is Y equals X, the height here is X, right? That's the Y value for the height. And so the height is one here. So if you plug in one for your X, you're just gonna get one. So the height is also one. So it's gonna be one half times one times one. That'll be the area uh, for this triangle here. But this triangle, the area is gonna be exactly the same because we're, we're talking about distance, right? So it's still one. So it's also gonna be one half. So the area here is one half. So now we have two areas and you add them up and you get one. So pretty cool, right? Nice problems. Absolute values are interesting because you know the absolute value is, is a function, right? I mean, it, it measures the distance between uh, a number on the real number line and zero. That's that's a very important tool in mathematics. So yeah, kind of a fun integral. Till next time, good luck. Take care.